There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, a happy Sunday morning to you. Happy Sunday afternoon, evening, night, wherever you are in the world. I have my brother Patrick joining us. Um, and let me tag, I'll tag you too. Uh, I'll Please, share yeah. that on my page. And um, this is on the Bow Wow Bill Facebook page, Bow Wow Bill YouTube channel. And you know what I found out, man? Like 70% of the people that watch the videos on the YouTube channel are not subscribed. So really? if you guys want to, it, it's like crazy. Button. Yeah, hit, hit the, the like button, button, but hit the subscribe. Yeah, if you guys wouldn't mind doing that, I would appreciate that so much. And then we're also on Twitter. And Twitter's pretty wild because Elon bought it, you know, but I like it, man. I, I'm it's all open about now. It's free game now, right? No more Twitter jail. Yeah, tw well, Freedom. and it, it's all about speaking the truth. Right. Yeah. And we'll get into that as well with dogs and how that can benefit us as a community. And uh, the beautiful thing about Patrick is you have experiences, not just from the states here, uh, which you've recently moved back to, but you also across the pond have a lot of experience over there. Um, would you mind just giving people kind of a quick, quick rundown about who you are yeah. and uh, what you're all about? Yeah. So um, actually, Bill, I'm very inexperienced in the states. All my experience besides the last 60 days have been, you know, really in, in Germany, in Europe. Um, so my name is Patrick, everybody. Um, born and raised in Germany, in Hamburg, Germany. I'm a dual citizen. Uh, about age 13, I came to the USA when my dad retired from the military, military brat. I myself joined the U.S. Army at age 18. First duty station was back in Germany. I did about four years over there. Then I did a few with three deployments overseas to Iraq and then did a couple of tours in the U.S. and then back to Germany for 10 years. So I recently retired from the U.S. Army out of Germany, uh, where my wife, Alicia, and I run a family business that was started by my German grandfather and canines and dogs. So we, a lot of people look at us as trainers. We do train dogs, of course, but our bread and butter is breeding. We breed German shepherds, show lines, working dogs at a level that you just don't see, right? Our breeding is at a very high level. Um, we do one or two Malinois X herder litters a year. You very rarely see those things for sale because they're, they're bred. They're only sold, given to special folks. Like I really mm -hmm. only like selling to experienced military and police. When somebody tells me they're military police, that doesn't automatically give them a puppy. Uh, it just doesn't. Um, experienced yeah. folks. And um, I really like giving it to my Napopo brothers and sisters so they can, uh, you know, put the system on those puppies and, that kind of helps everybody in the system as well. And it helps me with my dogs being seen at high levels. Cool. And, um, you know, that's that's crucial for a breeder. And I'm a breeder as well. And you might hear a bunch of uh, noises in the background, both from Patrick's side and my side. And that's because of <laughs> we breed dogs, man. And <laughs> we, are, we already have a ton of people. I just tagged you. Uh, we got it's 7 p.m. in Germany and we already have people joining us. What's up, John? There's John. Uh, that, that, John's my he's my IACP mentor, man. That's that's my brother right there. John's a man. Yeah, man. Um, Cooper and Carter miss yeah. you, Patrick. Yeah. Ah. Hey, guys. And we got uh, greetings from Germany already. Yeah. Hey, you guys. Yeah. Share this if you don't mind. Let's let's get as many people onto this live stream as possible. And then I tagged you as well, Patrick. So um, um, you should be able to 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 uh, share that as well. So let's just get started, man. Yeah, um, let's roll, man. Welcome to the United States. I didn't realize that you're from, born and raised in Germany. I yeah. thought uh, you were here. A lot of people, there. a lot of people don't know that, Bill. A lot of people don't know that born and raised Germany is my roots, man. I got dual citizenship, and coming to the U.S. now is a huge adjustment for me and my family. Huge. Yeah. What What is the biggest change? Um, oh man! So far? How long? Um, well, how long have you been here? First off, I got here 28 March. So what's that? Almost two months. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, you're you're still uh, yeah. wet behind the ears. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. I, I would say the biggest difference, man, is Germany is very chill, very law abiding, very safe. Okay. Uh, you come to the U.S., you just see a little bit more hecticness. Um, the groceries here are out of control, expensive, but we're still wow. we're still learning it. We're still getting back used to it. I would say the biggest thing is just the culture. Germany is a little bit more safe, secure. You don't have to worry about the small things you worry about nowadays here in the U.S. But again, uh, we're, we're still getting adapted. Hold on. You're breaking up just a little bit. I want to make sure. Okay, there you're yep. back, I believe. All right. Sometimes so, I get a little spotty connection. Go ahead. It, 
the one of the biggest things is dog training. I mean, I'm going from a place where our dog training is at a high level in Europe. We're at the Ferrari level. And I'm coming here and the few folks that I've trained with already that are professional dog trainers, um, it's hard for me to make that adjustment to a lower level of dog training. Um, so I'm still learning how to do that because what I don't want to do is come over here and, you know, I'm a very confident guy, but I'm not arrogant. And I don't want to make people see, seem to think that I'm, I don't want people to think that I'm arrogant because of the level of dog training I'm used to. But it's very hard for me to see what, what the level of sport dog training here is at the high level of the States. Hopefully that makes sense. Absolutely. It's the expectations um, here are a lot different in the targets and goals here and the experiences. Right. And yeah. it's overall, I think, um, you know, just, just the opinion of, of the pinnacle of where they're at. And, and I actually like that because we're pushing the envelope. We want not here in America, but the, on this conversation, that's what I'm talking about. It's like, look, yeah. if we have experience and we know what it could be, then we, we share that. And, and when you look around and you see that people's expectations are falling short of what yeah. really could be of the potential, then I think it's our duty to speak about that. And so we hold ourselves to a higher account and, and don't sell these dogs short because that's what I see even in the pet dog world as a pet yeah. dog trainer. I'm like, dude, that dog is smart. Like that dog knows what's up. Like we're not going to let this fly. We need to hold that dog to, to the, to, um, to the degree that they need to be held to. And just like you or me or anybody that has been like, uh, doesn't, we don't have our potential realized that's frustrating. And, yeah. um, and I, I can imagine it's the same for the animal as well. So it's not about arrogance. It's about speaking the truth that we were the mentioning truth. earlier. Right. And the yeah. observations that you have and, uh, and, you know, sometimes that might rub people the wrong way, but so be it, it is what it is. And that's the, the degree of like pushing those expectations up higher and higher and higher based on your own personal experience. Is that what you're yeah, trying to no. say? I agree 100 percent. And I got to say, man, is I'm not, I'm not in the profession of feelings. I'm in a profession of dog training, dog breeding. And I think, you know, through my coaches, Michael and Bart Bellin have played a huge role in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Helmut Reiser, uh, all the folks, Ervin Pitter, all the guys and gals that have trained us at this high level that most people will never see. You know, even if you go to some of these courses now, you're going to get the baseline. But remember, we were over there before some of these courses were courses. So we saw in the weeds. You know what I mean? So we were taught by some of the best over there in the world. You know, your, your Peter Scherz, your, your, your Florian Knobbles, all those guys are all over there in Germany. And Bill, I want you to imagine this, man. And everybody watching, imagine this. I got a lot of great friends that do PSA. I personally don't compete in the sport, but a lot of friends, good friends of mine do. Man, I know a buddy of mine, Chris Smith, who drives four or five hours to a dog club. That's unheard of. We have dog clubs every three to five kilometers over there. And that, that's not an exaggeration, like zero exaggeration. There is a dog club in every single freaking village. Now, due to animal welfare, they're getting smaller and more scarce, but they're still there. So to get to a high level of training, you may only have to drive 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Here, some folks have to drive 8, 12 hours. So that's a big deterrent, too, is, you know, the cost of you know, transportation, the whole nine. So I, I think that um, just the access, me being lucky to have those folks over there at, you know, at my disposal anytime I wanted to go is a huge reason why um, Alicia and I are who we are today. Well, we talk about that. I, I had uh, Mark Payon, who is a USA uh, helper and decoy for Schutzen. And we talked about yeah. that, the limitations. And, and basically, it's geographical limitations. Like some people don't have clubs around them. And if they do, there's no guarantee that that's a, a legit good club. And just like John says, well, first off, my wife said that she shared it. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you, man. Lo lo love you. Um, John says, let's be honest. Professional dog yeah. training came from Europe, right? It's a deep part of the culture across the pond where um, 
we don't have that here, man. It's a part of the the European culture. I've never been there, so I'm, I'm man. You know, you you hit the nail on the head when you said culture. And when John was the, my oversight when I was his chair for the European Committee in the ICP, that's one of the biggest things that John was so open minded to was culture and understanding that Europeans have a different culture. And there's so many stories. I know Bart tells. Um, stories of when he was a kid, man, driving to his dog club with a basket and his Malinois sitting in the basket and dry riding his bike to the dog club. It was culture. That was the kind of, you know, you're not really a man or, you know, or hardcore. You're not an alpha unless you have a dog at a dog club. Back then, you know, w- women dog trainers were, weren't were really popular. Now, thankfully, they are. But back then, every every tough guy, like here, every tough guy has a gun, right? Every tough guy has a dog. And it was really culture. And that culture is slowly being faded away over there. Um, one of the reasons, guys, that Alicia and I did decide to move were um, the, the laws and regulations are just unobtainable. Mm. It's just imp- impossible to stay within the regulation and within the law and train the sort of dogs that we train. I mean, Bill, just think about training you know, one of the toughest dogs you've ever had and not even being able to put a collar on him less than six centimeters thick. It's 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 dang near impossible. And now let's let's not even talk that Germany is a no kill country, meaning they don't euthanize these dogs. Hmm. So what happens is they send these. So let's say Patrick has an aggressive dog in Europe and Patrick can't control the dog due to the restraint that the government has put on me. So what do I do? I can't go to a vet and say, hey, this dog has six live bites. I need to put it down. Just bit my two-year-old child. This is a true story, by the way. Not with me, but with a, with a friend of mine. Bit um, a child. She went to the doctor, the vet, the attempt to put the dog down. I was in full support. Once a dog bites a child for me, it's over, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, especially a two-year-old. Um, put the dog down. Bit the child in the face, a baby girl. The vet said, no, can't put it down. So the next phase was, okay, so what do I do? They said, you need to rehab the dog. Well, she said, I can't rehab the dog because the tools that that I'm able to use, um, the dog will not respond to. So I said, okay, well, contact the sanctuary for for people that can handle this dog. The sanctuary costs 100 euros a day. And you have to pay this until the dog dies from natural causes. So it's very, very difficult over there in Europe to train the kind of dogs that we train. Now, you know, you come... You come to me with a dog like this and ask me to train it. Can I train it? 100% I can train it. But even me at my level, I cannot fairly, fairly and humanely train this dog without tools. I can go all day on the food method, right? But then we go, then we start going into extreme days and numbers of weeks, possible longer of no food to the dog reacts. And now we start getting into what people, some people call animal cruelty. So it's, it's very hard to do what we do over there. So that's one of the big reasons that we moved over to the States. Well, and people, they, they try to think with their emotions, man. And this is where I can, I just, I just know that this is happening. They anthropomorphize the animal and then they think with emotions, the human characteristics that overlay that on the animal and not realizing that any tool can be mistreated and that th- some of these tools have been developed through the years as an effective and efficient m- method of training. Yeah. And there's nothing, dude, I, break my heart if i hurt a dog dude i'm not there to hurt dogs and that's it it's like i don't want to hurt a dog i want to communicate with this dog as effectively as possible and i know that some of these dogs are like hercules dude they are non-stop and especially with you know these working lawn working line high maintenance dogs yeah. man if you limit and i was looking not even prong not even choke collars uh nothing training man no, nothing outlawed nothing that you, and, you can't and, build nothing like no, no BS, brother. Like, I'm not exaggerating. He used nothing. You can't, you really have to walk your dog on a harness to be in legal regulation over there in Germany. And the German government dictates how many times a day you must walk this dog and how many, how many hours a day this dog can stay in an outside four meter by two meter kennel. It's extreme. Uh, it's asinine. Yeah. It's coming it's- to the U.S., well, it's, I mean, because listen, I talk about this all the time. People are 10 times more likely to act based on emotions than they are on pure logic. 
and not realizing that, look, man, we've dedicated our lives to understand these animals and to communicate with them in a, as effectively as possible. And when we do use deterrence or when we do use, um, and it's not just deterrent, like this stuff is motivational. This stuff, we can, we can activate dogs with these tools. And that's where people don't realize. And that's where I'm so excited about this, this Napopo uh, school and, and the philosophy, because dude, I, as a dog trainer, like I learned from my grandfather and, and yeah. we'll talk about that with you too, but I've learned yeah. based on my grandpa's actions, like we didn't have like, uh, terms for this stuff. We didn't have yeah. quadrants. My, 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 my grandfather didn't, um, you know, tell me, well, this is negative reinforcement. This one's positive reinforcement. This one's positive punishment. This yeah. one's negative. We just did it. Yeah. We just did it. And I watched him and, and, um, yeah, we cannot let this happen. That's why we are talking. This is why I talk to people like Patrick. That's Jackie. Jackie, I love you. This is hey, Jackie. My, I Jackie, agree, Jackie. She's one of my Patreon supporters, you guys. And I'll put up a yeah. link later on to my Patreon. And uh, for all my supporters, I can't thank you enough. And if you like what I'm doing here, please consider hopping over there and supporting me as well. Um, and we got our man here, yours, ding, dang, down. Nah, <laughs> you know, you know, yours and I got a love hate relationship. I don't like the guy at all, but I love him to death. You know what I mean? That's a joke. Of I, I love, yeah. Yuri's I know exactly job, what man. you mean. Yeah. No, I, lo I love him to death. Man, he does a fantastic job uh, preaching the system. And he was just at the military working dog conference, do a fantastic job, man. I've trained with him. Great dude. If you guys need any help in the U.S., man, that's one of the guys to go to. Well, in the people that it, it, it reminds me of this saying, dude, of like the people that say it should or can't be done need to get out of the way of the people that are actually doing it. And that's yeah. why what attracted me when I first saw Bart um, and, and Michael, I well, and first off, today's Michael Bellin's birthday. Yeah, happy guys. birthday. <laughs> happy happy birthday. birthday. It's your birthday. <laughs> happy uh, birthday, Michael. And just seeing how um, when the first time I saw Bart, present at the IACP conference he we actually put the tools on people yeah right and, and that's and what i do too. Yeah. yeah absolutely we 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 use the tools on ourselves it's not something yeah. that we're going to avoid ourselves we use it on ourselves to teach the methodology and and we go through the methodology experiencing it ourselves and guess what man i'll never forget it because of the way that they taught me it right and that's yeah. what's so effective about these schools as well is that we use the tools on ourselves and i think that that's only fair like i don't i'm not going to put something on my dog that i don't know what's what that feels like i want to know and be confident that that you know i'm not overstimulating i'm not yeah. doing something that would send a miscommunication to that dog and um you know, a lot of these people, they, they never had a dog like this, man. And I, yeah. I told my clients, they're like, Ooh, I want that. And I was like, let's go. To no, a, you don't. Yeah. yeah. Let's go to a club. Let's go see what these dogs are all about, man. Walk by that dog and that dog explodes. And I see this person like, just like, Whoa. And you can see in their face, like they had no clue <laughs> that a dog was capable of exploding or just like being that intense. And I'm like, you still want one of those dogs? And they're like, hell no. Right. And a lot of these people, they don't know what they're getting into. And that's what is so important about this education. And dude, right now, dog bites are going through the roof here in America yeah. because of the, the, yeah. the pandemic puppies that people didn't take the time or didn't take the consideration before they bought this animal. And now they're becoming two, three years of age into adulthood. And and these dogs are, I mean, they're used to being the boss and they're used to challenging. And, and, um, and so that's, that's another situation that we're dealing with is that none of these people that are writing this legislation have had a dangerous dog themselves. They don't know the experience and they don't know what the hell they're, they're, they're talking about essentially. Yeah. You hit, when you said the word legislation, I'm glad you said that Bill. Um, I want to come back to that. And I want to go real quick on what you said about how we were taught by Bart and Michael in the system that we teach about using low negative reinforcement and using the tools in ourselves. Look, I come from the old school German. I, I was five years old at the Hundeplatz, which is a dog club at my grandfather's club, watching the old school Germans. Only a couple of those are still around today, you know, um, of trained dogs. And that old school dog training in Europe was yank and crank. That's it. Bottom line, it was yank and crank. Anybody says different, they're lying. Yeah. Um, the dog training systems I see now in the U.S. 
are still that of what we were doing 20, 30 years ago in um, in Germany. So I'm I think what Bar- to... oh, you're fine. I'm looking for books. That's what I'm, if you're yeah. looking up. Yeah, you're fine. Go ahead. Yeah. So I think what Bart and Michael did a fantastic job of doing was taking Bart's knowledge and Michael's knowledge of the old school way. All right. Because remember, Bart's Bart's in Belgium. So he knows exactly how to train old school, I'm sure. Um, and they said, hey, let's find a way to make this modern and more humane. Mm. And I think, the, you know, the, these guys, these guys will go down in history and dogs. We can never pay these guys back. You know, Michael, Bart. Helmut, all these guys that put so much time, effort, and money, money, millions of dollars in the dog training to teach us the way. And now what we're doing, let me tell you what happens legislation-wise, Bill. Can I can I tap on that real quick? Of course, man. So I was the chair of the legislative committee and a member of the legislative committee for about two and a half years. And uh, John, um, John was my oversight. And Rick Alto, another one of my mentors, man. He was my first mentor. Old school guy. Great. That tells you how it is. Boom. And Legislation happens behind everybody's back. You will not know what's going on unless you know where to look. It never comes public until it's signed. Hmm. And then what do you have? You have everybody pitching a fit about it. Oh, my God. Legislation ban here, ban there. Stop the madness. Stop your complaining about it. Let's stop. And let's get what have you done to be proactive. Bill, do you have security cameras in your home? On the you better believe it. You better believe it. Can I ask you why? Uh, so I have an eye when, on my property, and so I can be feel secure when I leave this place, or, or right. I have alerts if somebody enters my alerts. driveway. It is right? an early warning system. I have security cameras on my property as an early warning system for me to lock and load. Once you come in here, I'm going to shoot, okay? That's why I have security cameras on my property. Once you get into my house, it is too late for you, all right? And once this legislation gets signed, it is too late for us. It's too, Mm. I have never seen a bill reversed once signed. I have seen the IACP watchdogs and the AKC legislative alerts is what we go off of on the committee. It's a system that you sign up for. It takes 30 seconds. The AKC does a fantastic job of alerting you when a new bill is coming in front of the House or the Senate or local. And that's when you can start voicing your opinion, going in front of Congress. Uh, Rick Alto was in front of the mass uh, committees, the um, Boston, Massachusetts uh, committees about uh, about dog laws and legislation. Uh, We got ahead of Hawaii. We got uh, so many rules and regulation because we got ahead of it. So my recommendation for everybody is please stop complaining about these laws that are that are in effect. If you haven't done the due diligence to get ahead of it, ahead of it and how you can do this due diligence is sign up as a legislative watchdog in the IACP. Give a little time to the legislative committee and learn the process. The only way we can get ahead. Sorry, Bill. The only way we can get ahead uh, to beat this is to get ahead of it. Well, I'm, I'm trying to find a. Um, uh see if I can find a link, if anybody can post up um, a link to the oh nine legislative committee where people can start to um, get an idea of this. Do they have to join the IACP or? Uh, no, you don't have to join the IACP. Of course, we would love you to, because um, yeah, at the end of the day, we are an organization that's, that's member based and member driven, but you can you know, contact uh, Marlena Ruiz is the oversight of the legislative committee. Um, anybody can contact me if they're interested and I can give them the information to contact the legislative committee directly. Cool. And I'm going to put up a link to the caninprofessionals.com homepage right now while I'm thinking about it. So if anybody's interested, head over to the ICP, become a member, see what they're all about. And boom, there it goes. And forever, whoever's commenting, just keep commenting, keep those questions coming. I'm going to go to the comments here in a little bit and we'll go through all the comments, questions that you have. Um, and, and people have to realize, too, is that law language differs from normal language a lot of times, too. And we don't sometimes it's 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 legal terms and things that might not necessarily make sense to to somebody that is not privy uh, to that 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 knowledge. So it's, it's cool to have kind of a, 
a brain trust, <laughs> like a bunch of yeah. eyes looking at this stuff so we can be a, a, aware of when when some of this stuff is coming down the pipeline and we can get in front of it, man. New Jersey, um, Bill, right now, New Jersey is trying to put a bill into place to regulate the industry. So if you're in New Jersey, get with the legislative committee. It's called, it's, um, it's, let me, I'll try to put the link in here. Let me give you guys the bill number one second. It's Bill Alpha 5364. Bill Alpha as an A5364. New Jersey folks, get on it. They're trying to regulate you. Well, anytime they try to regulate, and I understand like a, a regulatory body. I re understand because people care about this stuff, but I mean, we're just putting this stuff in the wrong hands, man. And the professionals that have traded their lives to work with these animals, they're the, they're the people that we need to listen to. Yeah. And um, like the old saying of like, who's watching the watchers, right? That's, that's yeah. where I, that's where I kind of go to whenever I hear regulatory body, like government regulatory body. I'm just like, Ooh, you know, some, some of the best uh, psychopaths are, are attracted to positions in government, man. And they don't let necessarily consider um, the repercussions of these laws and and it's just it's just something that they can they can pass down to make themselves look good and here in america we have what's called pork where they've just stuffed these laws with all these different rules that you don't know until it's come into effect um yeah and yeah, that's Bill, that do, you know, do you know why man these laws are coming into effect there's a purely positive um lobbyist in that politician's ear why? Because they're ahead of us right now. They yeah. are proactive. We are reactive. How do you fight proactivity? You become proactive. It's the only well, we way. become unified. We become unified, and they're and they're unified, man. And it and, and they got money. They got money, man. Yep, and deep pockets, and yeah. and they feel. You know what? And I get it, man. They feel they're doing the right thing. Yeah. But but what they don't realize is like, like I was saying earlier, they never worked with a dangerous dog. And they're trying to think with their emotions and they're trying to feel their way. And you can't think with your emotions. We have our emotions to, you know, I tell people, follow your heart, but use your head because our heart can lead us into some situations that, that might not be the best for us. Right. Because we've gotten emotional about something and we didn't use our head and, and really, really think this thing through. And, um, you know, that's something to consider, man. And, and like you said, once a law is made, I mean, the, 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 it. versus repealed, yeah. um, it's, it's, it's a totally different, like they're made immediately, but it, it, it takes a lot to get them repealed. And it takes, yeah. because once it's in the books, man, once it's signed, then, then it's kind of set in stone. And, um, and a lot of times they feel these laws with pork and so, or different things. So if you, if you now want to, you know, get this law repealed, well, now you're also dealing with all these different, uh, aspects of, of influence that might not have anything to do with animal welfare, but it's, it's also put into these bills to ensure that it's not going anywhere, man. Um, yeah. so like what, like they'll, they'll put in, um, for example, a dog training bill with, um, and then they'll put some funding in there for the homeless, right? And so you go yeah. try to try to repeal this dog training bill, and then they say, well, what about the homeless? Like it's something that yeah. is almost a non sequitur, man, and it's yeah. and it's frustrating. But we need to know that, and we need to be unified, and that's one of the reasons why I do these live streams. And it's not necessarily. I mean, I would love to get this out and viewed, you know, as, as much as possible. But it's also the people that are watching this are, are some of the best luminaries in the dog training industry. And we need to become unified. And there's a saying, an age old adage in dog training, like we get three dog trainers in a room. The only thing that yeah, two of them will agree on is that the third one is wrong. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. we needed to stop that shit and we need to get get our our heads together and, and get unified and at the end of the day we're doing it for the dogs man yeah it's about relationships bill and that's another big thing that i see is different between the u.s and germany i can tell you this man i don't think i have i don't have beef with anybody in the industry but i i know i can call anybody in germany in my local area whether we're friends or not and they're dog trainers i need something they're going to support me 
the drama is, of course, a drama, but it's nowhere near about what I hear about here in the States. I don't think I would ever join a dog club in the States, ever, right? Um, I think egos play a big role in what we do here. And at the end of the day, it's hurting the sport. It's hurting the dogs because if we let our egos get in the way, what's going to happen is they're going to ban our tools. They're going to tie our hands. And then all these hardcore dogs, because America is not a no kill. They're going to be put to sleep. And at the end of the day, the dogs lose. Yeah, you betcha. And it's not like ego. Ego is a driving force. It's just that that ego becomes the, the, the driver <laughs> instead yeah. of the driving force behind the individual. Right. And that the ego gets uh, a little bit out of control there. And, and that's where we need to realize too, is to set that ego aside and to cooperate with each other yeah. and, and to realize, Hey, look, yeah, I know that you're my competitor, but at the end of the day, we're all passionate about these animals and we need to cooperate and we need to come together um, with the unified message. And, and also to acknowledge the people that came before us that made this possible, man. And th- like you said, millions of dollars spent and we stand on the shoulders of giants and, and to, yeah. to acknowledge our mentors. Like for me, Michael and Bart Bell and um, yeah. I mean, Tony and Chetta, there's so many that have, have trained me that I I'm so thankful for L- Linda, Linda K- Kayam, um I mean, I can go on and on as I, as I think through, but, but we were, these dogs have been with us um, as as our partners for so long, man. And we have to look at the lineage and we have to look at the history, but also we have to preserve it and we have to know, hey, look, these tools that we have aren't, aren't just a hammer, right? Correct. These tools, when we understand it and we have a modern approach, I mean, when I went to Napo Post Silver School, dude, it blew my mind. And you know, I sat right next to your wife, and your I wife know. Had the only know. perfect score ever on silver, uh, dude. So Al- Alicia is a big nerd, man. She's awesome what she does. <laughs> She's very book smart. And I one copied thing- her notes. I copied yeah. her notes. <laughs> I did. I was like, because we can work together in silver as, yeah. with students, you know. And I'm yeah. like, give me those, give me those flashcards, dude. Like you're doing something yeah. right, dude. So. Thank you, one Alicia. Th- she helped me so much. <laughs> She's laughing in the background. Uh, <laughs> w- w- one thing that um, Alicia is fantastic at, where I can't even compete with her at, is puppies. And that's the most important training, in my opinion, mm. is puppy training. And just like when you have your little four-week-old puppy running around your feet right now, and it's submersion and socialization, right? And this is what most breeders can't do. Um is it, they don't do that right there. It's not that they can't, they just don't. And that's the most important thing. And right. at least, right. yeah, things like that, stimulation, the whole nine. And so folks know this is a single puppy out of a litter. So this is now 10 times more important than it would be if they had put a siblings, litter mates. Uh, mm-hmm. You're doing a fantastic job there, man. Dude, and I'm, I'm looking at other other puppy uh, breeds that or that have, uh, my other breeder friends that I've had puppies so I can put them around and and I put them around these other dogs is uh, yeah puppy breath getting my hits of puppy breath um, <laughs> but I, but also observing what what their mom does and I have a training facility out here and I remember a litter one of my first litters that I ever had I placed them out there once the mom started playing with them yep. around this age and dude that mom would go from one side of the barn and just like trampled the puppy and at first, dude, I was trying to get in there. Hold on. Oh, I'm back down. I was trying to get in there and stop the mom, but then I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like, like but there's something was- natural here, right? And but to me, it looked ugly at first, right? And I was just like, okay, Bill, my emotions got in the way of the mom trying to teach their baby, right? Yeah. And so I took a step back. I trust my my girl. And so I know she's not going to hurt these dogs. She's a good mom. And so I watched what what took hold, dude. And it was so cool to watch the mom go from one end of the barn, zip over, trample the puppy, go to the other end of the barn. And the puppy's just like, what the hell? And like, and and it kind of freaked out, it looked ugly. It looked like a messy, messy thing. But then all of a sudden the puppy started to realize what was going on and started to brace themselves yeah. and wasn't getting toppled. And then the puppy stopped. And like defended itself. And then the mom stopped and started licking the puppy. Like, dude, I'm that's exactly what I'm teaching you here. And it was like an epiphany yeah. for me, man. Like, yeah. l- like Bart says, Bill, 
let the dog do <laughs> that's what I, it will ring in my head forever because i go in there and try to mess with it and he's like bill stop so let the dog dude, do. so many breeders do that and so many breeders let me give you an example that we've had we've had hundreds of litters in our lifetime Alicia and I. um and a lot of times the mom will push the puppy away right push the puppy away you put the puppy back on the nipple push it away and then what do most people do they grab the dog puppy start feeding it bottle feeding it we don't do that it's Sparta over here with our bloodlines. You know, either make it or you don't. And we, of course, we try to give the puppy a chance, put it back on. The mom's pushing that puppy away. The mom's not letting that puppy eat. She's telling you something. Something was wrong. And we let nature take its course. Because one thing, our puppies are very expensive. So one thing we can't do is sell a sick puppy to a client. And a lot of times there's no way to tell Everybody could say, I do these type of health checks and this type of health check. Okay, you don't do every single health check in a book, stop lying. You don't, all right? So there's absolutely no way to tell. Nobody's taking blood and checking for a complete blood picture before they sell a puppy. If yeah. there's an issue with a puppy, we let nature take its course. We have a health guarantee. We definitely don't do that. So I know I know exactly what you're saying, man. And Bart's 100% right coming from, man, I remember back when I was eight, nine years old, true story. I'm not going to get into too much detail because it's a little graphic. I remember being there with my grandfather and when puppies were probably eight, seven, eight weeks, maybe a little younger, they would, and this is so BS now that I'm a breeder. I'm like, I can't believe these old guys did this, right? right. They would pick, they would pick the dogs up by the scruff of their neck, pick it up and shake it. If the screamed, it was like Sparta, Bill. I swear to you, if it screamed, it was gone. Wow. And that's how the, I'm t- man, maybe they were right. Maybe what they were doing for the bloodline was, because maybe that's why there's so many hard bloodlines over in, the, in, in Germany. But nowadays, of course, every puppy, every puppy, whether you scream or not, and that's what's so good about Napo Po. If you have a weak dog, now we know how to make it strong. Yes. Back then, they didn't have those resources because they didn't have that education. So they thought the only way to do it was to get rid of the puppy or give it away or whatever it is. Nowadays, there's even some colleagues of mine. Um, I'm going to give you an example. A great friend of mine, Piotr, and his soon-to-be wife, Mago. Um, Piotr likes to take the weaker dogs and make them strong. I'm the opposite. I want the strong dog, right? I want my job to be a little bit easier. But And then you see the dog after Piotr touches it in you know eight, nine months, or his dad touches it, and then it's just a monster. Those resources weren't there. And his dad, who I really look up to, doesn't speak a a, a lick of English or German, but we can communicate fantastically, hands and arms. Um, his dad is from the old school and, you know, just didn't get to go to Nepopo because of the language barrier, but of course, Piotr teaches him. And now you can see the old school mixed with the new school, brother. It's like a cha-cha dance, man. It's beautiful. Well, now we have tools, and that's where these tools come in, dude, that we can talk to the weak dogs, dude. We can talk to the strong dogs, and we can talk to those weak dogs. And in a way that the dog thinks that they're 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 learning on their own, where we aren't part of that learning process. And I tell people like when I'm when I'm a, a, a big variable in that learning process, guess what happens when I leave the room? So does the training process leaves with me, right? We want to instill yeah. uh, an environment where the dog learns on their own. Yeah. And the beautiful thing about this too is that Michael is um was has a psychology background, Michael Bellin, right? Yeah. And when we do the silver school, we talk about the bell curve and we talk about now, look, this is for the majority of the dogs that are in the middle of this bell curve, right? And and then but there's outliers. Yeah. And as, as, as professional, we get a lot of these outlier dogs, a lot of these dogs that are weak or, or fearful or autistic, right? If we have, if we have developmentally delayed human beings, we have developmentally delayed dogs, man. It just I, have, makes well, I, I, I think my wife's dog is, is honestly, he's a little slower, but she's done a great job with him. Yeah. And that's like, how do we, how do we recognize these dogs and, and how do we work with them? And there is a system. It's just that we move a little bit slower, maybe with some of these dogs. We become yeah. a little bit more uh, insistent with some of these dogs, and we set up an environment where they can thrive. And that's where the people don't realize that are trying to outlaw these these tools is that we're not only are we 
like putting a disadvantage and handicapping trainers, but we're also putting a disadvantage to be able to teach these dogs that need that little special effort. Yeah. And, um, and that's important, I think, to, to, st- to say is that, you know, these tools are, it's like handing an iPhone to a dog, man. And, and try yeah, to remember, yeah. it's like, it's like, try to imagine your life without the, all these devices, dude, I got all around me that bring me so much convenience and make your life better. It's yeah. the same with the dog. These tools yeah. make their lives better because we can communicate more effectively and efficiently to them. Yeah. And one thing I tell all my students, man, is this, is I say, you can't correct the dog. The dog does not understand. You can't yeah. correct the dog. The dog doesn't understand. You can use variables of small negative reinforcement and shaping to get the dog to understand. And that's another thing too, man, is, you know, let's just talk IGP. I used to compete in IGP. I don't anymore because of the politics. Anymore. I just quit. I just don't do it anymore. So now all I really do is I do fun day popo dogs that can do anything and everything. And if I get a call for a contract and somebody wants a dog to do it here, they're there to do this, sniff, bite, whatever, four, five, six weeks, I can get the dog there and sell it. Um, but the thing is, you can't correct the dog that doesn't understand. It's just like you said, man, if I put you know, a pencil in my son's hand at six years old and tell him to do algebra, which I don't even know how to barely do, right? <laughs> I, can't, I can't correct him if he doesn't know how to do it. I got to well, teach him. I tell people like give your six year old the keys to the car and a, a shopping list, and and yeah. don't don't get mad when he wrecks the car in the driveway, right? Because yeah. there's a certain yeah. subset of knowledge that is incremental, right? It's yeah. not just boom, here you go. And that's the other aspect of this is like I tell my people that with the puppies, like they got a little brain, man. They need a little world to yeah. go with that little brain, man. Don't be don't be putting the the expectations of of a fully trained dog on this young, yeah. like baby. Right. Or this toddler or this like um, we're, we're, we're in um, adolescence or formative. Yeah. Right. And so we, we do stuff that start to prime us for later on in life. We'll start to plant these little seeds, but we are not expecting that seed to grow and flower Correct. blossom right Correct. now. That comes later on. Uh, but it, it, and it's important to understand that. And that's why people hire me. That's why people hire you. Hi, people hire professionals to get them to yeah. that level. But it's baby steps, man. It's baby steps. So it's chunking. It's-, it's chunking it. You know, back in the day, Bill, let's just for, say for IGP to get a dog to jump over the hurdle. It's very simple. Put a prong on it and jerk it over till it jumps. All right. That's the old school way. But yeah, now, and, and, it, yeah, and what happens? Then you say, hop. Bring and the dog's like you know, walking over and then climbing over the wall and then you get enough points in the event to pass. It, but it took you three days to train. Now that exercise may take me three months to train by shaping and using right. negative and positive reinforcement X Y Z. You know the pyramid. But now my dog is flying with passion, bringing with ignition, and coming with heart and soul. And that looks way better. And that's one thing, my dog, so I have a personal dog named Loco, it's all black Malawa. And Alicia has a brother named Tojo, all black Malawa. Um, same age, so litter mates. Um, one thing I can tell you, my dog can do way more than her dog can do. He can do tricks, he can do this, he can do things that you've probably never even seen a dog do. You know, most people would say. Um, her dog can do probably 60% of it, but all that 60%, it's so freaking flashy that anybody would choose her dog over my dog. And it's easy for us professional to see when a dog's flattened, right? Yeah. That's what we call it. Yeah. When we flatten out a dog, when we do a compulsive behavior where we just cram that in yeah. that dog's throat, we can see when that, that doesn't look good, man. And it might not, people might not have the eyes to see it in the general public, but as professionals, when we work with thousands of dogs, we see when a dog is heart and soul and that's one of the reasons that i joined maple po was the heart and soul aspect and like the 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 head up ears up tail up and just like let's let's do this make it make it the dog's idea right make it the dog um you know the dog is is more than willing because they've invented it in a a way right and that's how shaping and, and and understanding classical versus operant conditioning and, and knowing that, hey, look, there is a foundation of this behavior that we do need classical where we walk through dog through this. But there's also aspects of this where we're going to let that dog create their own behavior. Yeah. 
It's got to be out. No, I agree. And, and I would tell you this, man, if I give one recommendation to all the folks out there that in, in the U.S. or wherever you are, if you have a chance, I'm going to tell you, we're going to have a European, ICP European conference next year in 2024. It's going to be held in Prague. Um, we couldn't do it this year due to some issues. Right now. Um, but also what I'm going to do is hopefully have a couple seminars or get togethers over there. If you got a passport and you're out there and you can spend two, three days away, tickets aren't expensive. You can get a good ticket to Germany, to Prague, six, 800 bucks. And you can attend one of these seminars and you can see what the Napopo guys are doing in Europe. I'm going to tell you right now, man, I know I would say most of them, Napopo, U.S. or, or German or, or European. I'm going to tell you guys, there's a huge difference. I promise you, you have my word. I put my hand in the fire on this. If you could just go over and see it, I think you'll have a different outlook on Napopo. Not different because I think most people have a positive outlook on it. You'll have a, yeah, a different outlook because everybody. Well, better understanding. The, yeah. Better understanding. Everybody interprets the, 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 the system differently. But what I see, the guys like Hans, the guys like Piotr, you know, the guys that are over there doing this every day at high, high level. If you could just come, I invite you now. I invite you to come and see us in action. And I really think that education, bringing it back to the States, will make the standard of dog training and the standard of what we believe in, which is our system in Napopo, higher here in the USA. One thing I see a lot of, too, now is when I went back in, I don't remember when I went, 2016, I believe it was, 17, I really don't remember. Um, I think it was 18. <laughs> Anyways, um, when I went... We did it in Holland. I think everybody in that course, I want to say there was like 20, in that course was a professional dog trainer going to the course, except for maybe one or two Americans that had come from the U.S., right? So these folks already had a basic or a high-level understanding. And then Bart just put, boiling water into it as they would say right and michael they put the boiling water into it back then michael was doing most of the theory where she's fantastic at like just her, her teaching theory is fantastic and bart was doing most of the practical and they were they were driving as a couple right yes of and course. yeah and um the first thing they tell you is you know you come into this course doesn't make you a doctrine and that's true it doesn't it just gives you more tools for your toolkit so what I would like to challenge a lot of folks that are coming out of schools now is, you know, please further your education and remember that it takes five years to learn the system. See, a lot of people coming out of school immediately and saying they're professional dog trainers. Just just be very careful with that, because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you are a representation of all of us. That's right. And if you come out a little bit too green, you are going to get bit in the ass, literally. Yeah. Like yeah. this, this is a, the, the, the industry that involves bites, right? Just like Bart says, yeah. a horse kicks, a cat scratches, a dog bites. Dog right? bites. That's right. And we know one thing you said before, Bill, we were talking about egos is I used to be very confrontational. I'd say in the last, since I retired from the military, I've learned it ain't worth it. My blood pressure is not worth it being high. So I've actually, people older. who know me, yeah, man, people who know me, man, I can tell you in the last five years, I've done probably a 360, man. I really have. Um, Good for you. I've learned, I've learned to play politics. Um, but, you know, Pat Stewart says the best. Pat's a good friend of mine. Uh, says the best. Pat and Glenn, show me your dog. In my opinion, this is Patrick's opinion only, if you go to a professional dog trainer as a client, the first thing they should be able to do is show you their dog. If they can't, I would recommend you find somebody else. And yes. if you start going into the sharks of the high-level dog trainers, into the shark pit, into the wolf pack, you may want to come quietly until you can show your dog. Because if you don't, the pack will weed out the weak. Guess what? Watch this. Ready? Nice story. 
show me your dog <laughs> that's what who said, who said that who said that well i'm putting it on oh, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> because that's, bro, that's show me your dog yeah yeah, yeah. yeah nice story you can tell me all yeah. you want yeah. let me see let me see the dog let's yeah. let's see the proof in yeah. the pudding so to speak yeah. let's 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 see what we're all about and let's hold yeah. each other accountable man let's let's yeah. it, it, that's what at the end of the day man we we as human beings we're the same species yeah. We're talking about inner a different species communication here. At the end of the day, that's our expert is our yeah. dog, right? They're going to tell you yes, if you're sir. bullshit or not, you know. And yeah. that's one of the things I tell people is like, look, man, your dog will tell you if if you've hired the right dude here. And then I'll show yeah. them my dog absolutely all day long. I just had a big training session yesterday where, um, and and not only do I show them my dog, I have them handle my dog. As yeah. a pet dog owner, so they can feel what it's like. And I ask them constantly, how does this feel? How does this feel? Right. And they're like, whoa, dude, I never knew. And, and I also get comments when I'm out in public that people are like, is that a service dog? And I'm like, no, I'm not even, I'm, I'm not disabled. I don't need a service dog. I, yeah. I, I, you know, this is just a trained animal. This is, this is what we should expect. And we need to up our ante of expectations of what a trained dog is and to show it. And if we can't yeah. show it, maybe we got a problem. Maybe we need to go yeah. back to the drawing board. And there's nothing wrong with going back, Bill. I tell you, man, I make mistakes every day in dog training. And sometimes I have to take one step forward and five steps back. I really do. And I'm yeah. glad I have Alicia there as my sounding board and my team over in Germany when I was training. And one thing you'll very, you'll very rarely see, I think the people who post so much on Facebook about what they're doing, how they're doing it, um, I'm not really, you know, that type of person. Um, of course, every now and again, I like to post a little cool video once every six, seven months. But most of the time, those are people who are doing the least. And well, uh, the uh, videos are curated. We have to realize yeah. too, is like a lot of times it's the best of the best shot out of fifty yeah. or something like that. Like yeah. we don't know like the full process of of what this is, yeah. what we're seeing. We're seeing an edited presentation. Correct. And 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 thing, man, that I think that. I and probably many dog trainers out there have realized I've come such a long way with the help of everybody, man. I mean, seriously, the help of peers, people who, you know, my students, the help of everybody, because everybody makes mistakes, man. I've done things in dog training I should have never done. You know, I've been too hard on dogs. I'll be the first one to sit there in a minute. You know, I've done things I look back at now like, man, I shouldn't have done that. That was unfair training to that dog. I didn't know better. I didn't know better. It's not an excuse. It's not an excuse. I didn't know better. You know, I learned, yeah, I learned from my mistakes. And all I can do now is teach, coach, and mentor the folks coming after me not to make the same mistakes that I did and not repeat my mistakes. One of the most powerful things that we can say as an individual is three words. I was wrong. 100%. I was wrong many times. And I will be wrong again. I don't intentionally do it. I'm not, you know, Patrick Lack's not the guy that's going to go, hey, how can I screw up my, my life today? That's not me, but... But, you know, even with the background that I have and a you know, military background and the discipline that I have, we still make mistakes. Amen. And none of that, but that takes a type of humble, humble, humbleness, but also some vulnerability to yeah. to to admit that, man. And, yeah. and that's why we have a community that we can say, you know what, I was wrong, too. And here's yeah. what I did to fix that. And sometimes yeah. I've had realizations of like that have broke my heart, dude. I'm just like, oh, my gosh, if I knew what I knew, if I went to to the silver school as a beginning dog trainer, man, like I don't even know where I would be today. Right. I, I went to it and like a, a, after about 15 years of working professional dog trainer and I wish, and that's where I'm like anybody that wants to work with dogs, I'm like, go to silver school, go to silver school, you know? And then, and uh, because it's, it, it's a foundational understanding of the methodology that will benefit you and, and not only that, but now you're in a community of people that have said this, I was wrong. Here's what I did. And that, that have different eyes and uh, people like Hans and Piotr. Piotr, Piotr. <laughs> I have interviews with both of them as well, you guys. So Hans, for, for, never mind. <laughs> I'm not Ben, Bro ben, Brooken. ben Brooken. <laughs> and, and Piotr, uh, what's Peter? Hey, I would say uh, Piotr Kamachek. Yep. Both of them um, have like I, I, well. very quiet guys. Both of those guys are my friends. Very quiet, very humble. I mean, some of the best folks you'll ever meet, man. I mean, Hans will say literally like two words. I love him. If, he, if he's not giving a seminar, you know what I mean? But his proof is in the pudding. Piotr is more of a 
Uh, hey, man, his English is fluent, um, Piotr's, and he learned it himself. Yeah. Um, and he, he was he nervous. Can teach a, yeah, he can, on he, with me. He, he, can, he can teach a seminar in English. He can train dogs. He's a jokester. He's a family guy. He's the nicest guy you'll ever meet. He really is. He was at the IACP conference. Dude had a blast, man. First time in the USA, first time on a plane. Okay. He had a blast, dude. I need to come if they come again. And I'm sorry to butcher your names, guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm an average American. Um, you guys, go to the comments. <laughs> I'm going to go to uh, the comments here, okay? You wanna, yeah. let's, let's go through some of these because they're, yeah, they're sure. piling up. Oh, we got Kashi here. Well, we first up, Teresa. Love hey, you, Teresa, Teresa. What up? Long time no talk. Yeah, she's amazing. And then we have Kashi says, uh, hello, Patrick, the first yeah. guy to introduce Napopo Mo to me. <laughs> We had Kashi, a, man, we, we had a long, we had a great, fantastic uh, uh, interview on the Indian dog spot. I think we had like 25,000 people. It was crazy. Like, I didn't even know Indian had that many freaking dog trainers. This guy right here, man, you know, I haven't talked to him in a long time, but he's a smart dude. He can watch and do. Watch and do. Yeah, and Akashi, I'm, I, um, we're coming. We're going to be doing another live stream. Kashi and I are as well. And and uh, I've just been on the road when I was talking to him. But I'll get back to you, Kashi. Uh, and I love you, brother. Uh, we got uh, Mr. There. Cruz, Cruz, <laughs> Cruz Canine. Hey, fellas at class. What up, box feeding as we speak with mouths? So he's everybody's working. That's a that's an important they, thing to know. Like I said, is I yeah. the people that, that are watching this are the the creme de la creme, man. That we're working yeah. dogs all day long, man. De hey, man, Derek is like in Malawal with dopamine 24 <laughs> 7 man i don't know i don't know how that guy he sleep he don't sleep man when i was in germany he texts me like at three o'clock in the morning U u.s time and we have full conversation with all right dude i gotta go to the next line bye I'm like okay go yeah but love mom, his motivation mom, human, human clothing there gotcha you brother to catch up um I would say that's why I'm on the phone with uh illinois senate working okay. on icp patent yep i talk Th Yep, this guy, um, he uh, Derek took that head on by himself. He he formulated this um, this blanket letter head and, and wrote a blanket letter and did a fantastic job. And he's engaging it. these guys. He's engaging. He's engaging. Um, a lot of times, though, I will say this, and I'm part of the problem too. A lot of times, it's best not to have the guys like me or like Derek who are in your face go and present these. It's the guys like you, Bill, that are more calm. Those guys should take a lot of our work and go present it. Because we sometimes, Derek, somebody like you and I, are we don't know how to separate our emotions from the task at hand. So keep fighting, brother. Keep fighting. Not literally, yeah. Derek. Not literally, but on paper, legally. <laughs> I wonder, um, I'm trying to, I, I have the letter that he wrote that's so good, man. And it's um, House Bill IL for Illinois, SB 1327 Dog License Act. Google it. Um, yeah. Here, I'll put it, I'll put it in the, I mean, the and He's here. one of the guys, man, that he talks, he talks to talk, but he walks the walk, you know. He trains yeah. dog, he knows legislation, he knows how to communicate with people. And he's the type of guy also, I think, you either love him or you hate him. There is no in between. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> I absolutely yeah. love them. Um, we cannot, we U.S. cannot let this happen. To talking about the legislation yeah. here, we're going back a little bit for when we, when we were talking earlier. The tools changed our lives. I'm so thankful. For I them. need I to talk so about better. them real quick, Bill. Let me talk about this couple of thirty seconds. This okay. is a military couple, young sergeant in the army, uh, military spouse who are having trouble with two small, with one shepherd. Uh, I believe no, two small dogs. A while back, and. They, pay, they were very hesitant at first about Napopo, very hesitant. And I thought that they were going to be a pain in my butt. But opposite, one of the best clients I've ever had. This lady listened to every word I freaking said, and her husband, quietest guy you'll ever meet, was in the background taking notes. And what he did was he took what his wife, what I taught his wife because she was a client. He said, hey, Patrick, like six weeks later, hey, Patrick, can I show you my dog real quick? I'm like, yeah, this little... Sh Dog ain't no bigger than this, Bill, right? Dude, this dog was trained in Napopo at a basic level like you've never seen in six weeks from somebody who had no understanding. These folks are the reason I do what I do. Good job, you guys. Good job. 
no ma'am <laughs> i don't know what uh ding dang dong yeah. and then feeling is likewise he says about uh okay. you know and congratulate him. yeah congratulations yuri is on your on your continued success man and your engagement i don't know if you're married yet but you'll probably go to vegas and marry in some elvis outfit knowing you yeah he will like school getting sniped <laughs> i don't know what uh but wise words patrick Everyone wants a mal Mally until they get him. Yeah. Really got a Mally, dude. So, a a Andrew and his wife Emily, one of my students over in Germany, they have a mile a Mally for my breeding right now. He's, they're doing a fantastic job uh, with, with the dogs. They really are. They're going to be great dog trainers. Young kids. They're going to be um, great dog trainers. Emily's expecting here in the next couple of days. Awesome! Yeah. Congratulations, you guys. And and did the first mal that I worked with a, a long time ago. Like I was like, huh, this dog is different and. And I was watching this dog sleeping, and this is where I'm a pet dog trainer, right? I'm not a working dog guy. Well, I, I am in some aspects, but uh, I definitely wasn't back then. And I remember looking at this dog sleeping, and I, I just whistled at the dog like, and that dog came running to me before it was even awake. And that's yeah. where I was like, it took two, three steps to me before it was even like, like conscious. And I was like, whoa, this dog's, this dog's like a machine. I don't know how yeah, to explain it, but. Yeah. He's on it. And it's like, and it's a, it's a, just an intensity. Like people don't yeah. realize until like, like, like these guys were saying, it's like, you want a Mal until you get a Mal, um, you know, then, then it's a totally different, totally different ball game because it, these dogs don't have that off switch. And that's why it's important for us to teach them, you know, when to yeah. be on and when to be off. Yeah. Here's Kashi yeah. again. Oh, go ahead. Lord, okay, comes. Yeah, uh, Kashi, are you a member of the IACP? We would love to have you, brother. I need you on the legislative committee, bro. Like, well, well, I'm not the oversight, but I speak for the organization right now. We need you. Kashi's we need people lawyer. like you. He's a lawyer. Yes. You know, and he has a big following. And Bill, you just said something, man, um, about not a sport dog trainer. Here's my opinion on that. If you're a dog trainer, you're a dog trainer. You can train any dog. And anybody that knows me will tell you this. I think it's a lot harder to train a pet dog in a sport, <laughs> I really do. If anybody tells you different, hmm, I may question them. Any, in my opinion, it's so easy to train a high dog genetic, high drive genetic monster. It's easy. Try teaching a dog that don't like food or has zero drive. That's hard. So I respect everybody that trains dogs, no matter what and how you train. I'm proud to be a pet dog trainer, and and the thing is, is that I I look at te teaching methodologies and Socratic method and approaching this situation with questions and, and getting the people to really, really understand it. Because if I came into a situation with somebody that needs my help as a pet dog trainer and start talking napopo, I'm going to lose them, dude. Like, like the napopo is for a different, different audience. Like, like that aspect of it, these people just need help with this relationship. And, and it's my job as a teacher and that's what i consider myself as a teacher not just a, a pet dog trainer but i want to teach these people and as a good teacher not only do you instill the knowledge in a way that is easy for them to understand and to apply to their life but as a good teacher we need to become progressively unnecessary right and so we don't just we don't just um you know we're not we're not always there and in, in coaching that dog we we instill the knowledge and it's not about the dog with, with, with me, dude. It's like, it's not, it's not yeah. the dog that I'm trying to teach here. It's, it's, it's you. That's why I can take the leash and the dog performs but, completely yeah. differently with me than when I hand it back to you. And it's not like about me recreating a little me within you. It's, it's teaching people why this dog is behaving differently Correct. Pretty, pretty quickly with me than they than they are with you and then what what aspect of of that um concept of this relationship that you have that is disempowering this animal and 90 percent of the time is over affection it's over coddling it's yeah. it's just having it's anthropomorphizing just like we were saying about the people that pass these bills is we put human characteristics on this animal and i have to remind them like that like when was the last time you went and snipped your neighbor's butt? <laughs> like, when was the last time you went? <laughs> like, there's certain things yeah. that the dogs do that we would net we would find repulsive, but it's just what they do. It's a, uh, you know, they they pee, they check their, I call it checking their pee mail, right? And they're going out there peeing and sniffing and finding out who's in the area, uh, how old they are, how if they're healthy, what they've eaten, if they're in heat. There's a lot of information, and and the pee and poop that a dog has is just vehicles of protein 
that are kind of like their signatures that they're putting out in this world and helping them understand that. And then also how their thought process is a lot different than ours. And that, that by putting these anthropomorphic traits on this animal, these human characteristics on this animal, we're doing a disservice to this animal because they are not, it's not possible for them to think like we think we have literal biological differences. We still have like, like our vascular system, our bones, our neurological system and different parts of our body that are the same, like our brain, our stomach, our spleen, or like liver, blood, or all this stuff that have function for the body. But as as human beings have that neocortex, that new cortex, that outer buffer of our brain that allows us so many more capabilities with our thought process. And so overlay that on this animal, which does not have the part of their brain, and to understand, truly understand what the limbic system is, which is the mammalian brain, which do, that animal does have, and how that functions is what we should be doing. We need to become the dog by proxy, so to speak, like looking through the world as a dog would see it, instead of overlaying our own perceptions on the animal. Because when we do that, and I get it why people do that, because it makes it easier for us to understand. But that's one of the first things that I have to educate and help my, my clients learn is that that is a disservice to this animal because the capabilities aren't to that level. We are higher consciousness beings, and it is our moral obligation, in my opinion, to be stewards of these animals so that they're fulfilled just as much as we are in the relationship. And a lot of times I see the imbalance of us being fulfilled and and the dogs become an essential emotional dumping ground. And yeah. they'll take it for a while, but then something goes wrong or some some threat comes across or, or the dog is just unfulfilled after a while. And then pretty oh. soon that, yeah, then we blow up or, or the yeah. dog, you open the door, the dog is gone. Right. Yeah. Or there's certain things. Or he bites you. Or, he, or, it or it turns, eats you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's apparent. And then that's when they call me. And so that's where I try to figure yeah. out. And I tell pet dog trainers, like we have the variables, the three different variables of the environment, the person, and then the dog as well. Mm -hmm. And and I want every decision maker in that house. So we're all on the same page. So we're not one person isn't kind of unraveling what we're doing here. And um, yeah, that's that's I mean, there's a lot that goes into the pet dog world of, of human psychology and understanding how to be a great teacher and instill knowledge that will remain. And then at the end of the day, the dog is our expert. And so right. the dog you know, and so that as a pet dog trainer is is of what I'm proud to do, and I'm always yeah. learning how to and do you it should more be. effectively. And you should be, man, because it's not an easy job. I see a lot of folks that train high levels thinking that training pet dogs is easy. I do it. I've done it. I don't like to do it. The pet dogs because they're hard. Alicia does it. She loves it. And sometimes I just sit there and be like, I man, I don't see how you have the patience to sit here and wait for this dog to move. 45 minutes before you click the man's reminder. I don't get it. Like, I'd have been like, bro, like, I either can't do this. After th I'm used to my dog like not not stopping the move for 45 minutes. <laughs> so, my I, wife. I, I can do it, but I don't like to do it. I don't have the patience, man. Well, that's what you're saying about people like us that that yeah. are teachers, that, that this is where we need to step up. And and Derek says, I'm going back to the comments here. The guy making the law in Illinois had only one bad dog training experience and now wants to make a law that's straight emotion. Yeah. With the right. weight of logic, man, with no knowledge. But Derek, I'm going to tell you this, man. The only way for you to beat this law, in my opinion, is get on the calendar of the lobbyist who's writing this. Get with the legislative committee. Let them get on that call. Get on their re representatives, man. They will. Most of them will take your call. I, will, I think I've been on, you know, two or three. The representative Ash um, with, with a couple bills in Mass again. Um, they will talk to you. And honestly, um, they do take what we say most of the time into consideration. But the big problem is. They've never heard anybody from our side speak. So they're like, oh, now this makes sense because they're only getting it from who's presenting it. And they're emotionally charged. That's it. And, so, uh, and they're appealing to their emotions as well, which is a logical fallacy is, uh, that we need to realize. Looks like she was tagging her friend, Tanya. Thank you, you guys. Take a second, tag your friends, share this yeah. if you don't mind while, while we see Bill, people doing that. 
Bill, one thing real quick, man. Let me tell you my prediction. Okay, and today okay. we have the 21st of May. My prediction is this, and I hope it doesn't come true. My prediction is that at a national level, within the next 10 years, there will be a national regulation on dog trainer licensing and tools. Mm. Okay? okay. I think that one of the governing organizations like the IACP or another organization that does the same thing that we do will be the governing body for this license, for this licensing. I think the current members will be grandfathered in or have to take a small type of test to get their license. And those members will be able to regulate and license for. Now, which organization will it be? That's the question. And this is why we are one of the only balanced organizations at our level. It's so important for us balanced trainers to get on the same freaking sheet of music, stop talking all this junk to each other, get on the same page, join the organization, and fight back together. Whether you don't like the person sitting to the right or to the left of you, you have the same purpose. That's the all only way, the though. Dogs, man. It's I'm all about you, the man, dogs, man. At the end of the day. Sign up. And if you're worried about the small membership fee every year, it's 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 not that much money. Um, of course, you know, the, the lights have to stay on at the ISP office, so we have to charge something. But get on. You can become an associate member, become a professional member. Check it out. If you have any questions, reach out to me directly. I'm more than happy to give you a call, more than happy to talk to you. But it's almost to the too late point. But we still have a little bit of time. Right. Go to the conferences, too. That's what I've done for yeah. the last, I think, 11 conferences I've been to or something since way back. Oh, geez. No, not that many, but I should. I think, I, well, go to the conferences, mingle. Yeah. Uh, and, that, and that's the other beautiful thing about this. Like we had this app called Clubhouse where we were talking to people and we and, and I remember Pat Stewart, Glenn and, and so many dog trainers were on there at the at the infancy of this uh, app. And we could talk to people and we bridged the gaps, man. And once we realized that, you know what, we're all in it for the dogs, even the positive yeah. people like that, like yeah. I, I get it, man. And once we talk to them and ask questions and and even with these behaviorists, I remember talking to this lady who only trained four dogs, but she was a Ph.D. and she was a behaviorist. Yeah. You know, and and she did train her own dogs, but she didn't work with the the the, the span of dogs that that I have or or a lot of these professionals have, where we've seen these outlier cases. And not only that, but it's so cool that when we do have these outlier cases, I can pick up the phone and call other people and just be like, "What do you think about this?" Right? And or what do you think about that? And 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 what should I do here? I got this weird thing happening with this dog that I've never seen. You know, yeah. have you seen this or what do you what would your approach be? Right. And it's helped me so much. We are we are a brain trust. And, and like you said, at the end of the day, we're all in this for the dogs. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, let's see. Derek says I'm going back to the comments here. Yep, they give Ivan and Michael Ellis 10 minutes total hearing in Cal at Cali. Hmm. Should be more than that. I think I, those guys. Uh, no, go that's ahead. fine. Go back. Go. Uh, 10 minutes is a lot. They, they usually, 10 minutes is actually a lot. Oh, okay. okay they, yeah, good. they only give you, sometimes <laughs> they only give you like 60 seconds to 120 seconds. Yeah. So it's, it's actually a lot. I'm used to these long four conversations. We've already been on for like an hour and 15 minutes almost. Yeah, I love and, it. I and love we're it. still going, you know. Keep it rolling. We can keep go, it rolling. Yeah, we'll keep yeah. going as long as we need. And that's a beautiful yeah. thing about about these long four conversations that we can get it all in, man, and we can see where it goes. And yeah. Joe Rogan's was one of my uh, inspirations for this stuff. It's like, look, we got as much time in the world as we need to to make sure yeah. that this is understood and, and we touch on all the topics that we need yeah. to. We're not in these bite size like the old media, like where where we only have a couple minutes, uh, but that makes sense. That ten minutes uh, with uh, legislation is is huge. Here, let me read her. Hey, Ter Teresa, are you in the IACP? Let's Go ahead, Bill. She She'll answer okay. later. Yeah, legislation definitely happens behind the back of common people. I've seen it happen firsthand. Right, Jackie, my my gal here. I hate to say this, but a ban will not change the way I train a dog. Only better training will change how I train. Boom, dude. Yeah. What a great Jackie. I, let me tell you, Jackie. I agree with you. Coming from somebody firsthand who's experienced it, right? I can't say too much on live because it is what it is. But you're right, and it didn't change the way I trained either. But the consequences of getting caught are harsh. 
So we don't even want to put ourselves in that type of situation. Well, look at Jackie. I got this book. Just so you know, hup, what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm always reading. She recommended that book for me. And, and uh, Derek says, we need a second amendment for tools to protect them before they can be attacked, period. Once it's attacked, we are on heavy defense. And, and even though we're on heavy defense, it doesn't mean that we're always going to win, too. Derek, we need to be on offense and not defense. We need to be That's on right. the offense, brother. We need to stay in front of it. Uh, Patrick is exactly correct how it happens. This talks about the laws here. Uh, we do we do need someone in every state. Right? Yeah. All other associations have state representatives yep. that belong to a national associated association housed in Washington, D.C. Right. And then um, Derek's back. Illinois bill. Senator Wilcock Patrick has the info. Is being put on hold. Fantastic. And we are going to there, speak at Nipopo at the Capitol. I have former Lieutenant Government Governor helping me too. Perfect. Perfect. And and what I recommend, Derek, is get with some of them folks that have done this before. Um, get with the legislative committee and IACP. They can give you some recommendations. I'm sure Rick Alto wouldn't mind if you reach out directly to him. He's done it firsthand and he was successful. So get with some of those folks. They got some good notes and some good mentorship for you. Now, I know they'll be happy to talk to you. Well, know that like when I was talking to Michael and Bart, that they were talking about how the French legislation that is banning tools is allowing them for NAPOPO certified trainers. This is something that, uh, you know, it, it's something that they can ensure that these hand, these tools are going to be in the hands of people that know how to use them properly. And so I don't yep. know if that, uh, if that might be a caveat or something. I'm a, I'm a big sense. fan of freedom, dude. Like I'm a yep. born raised American. Yeah, and, there you go. And you freedom. know, there's consequences of freedom, but guess what? A free society does not guarantee safety. Only a, a despotic government would guarantee something like that because they would have to watch every aspect of human life. And I'm, no, yeah. I'm not about that, man. And I love the shirt, dude. I'm all about Hey, thank you, Bill. Um, a good friend of mine, Jerome Bessonette. He has numerous dogs for me. We do business all the time. Nicest guy you'll ever meet. Uh, he a actually was the one uh, pushing for that France thing. And this guy, oh, cool. if, you meet, if you meet him, you'll... He is relentless. I have met him. He won't stop. I have Good. met him. I've yeah, talked to the Beagles. He's the Beagle yes, guy. Yes, the... the Beagle man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I went Hey, I went to Jerome's house. I stayed with him for a week. Literally, this guy has hundreds of Beagles. Oh, oh. Hundreds. All over the place. And my Look, room dude, was wiped by their kennels. There you go, Jackie. That is it right there, young lady. That's it. AKC. AKC Legislature. Yep. Cool. Thank so you for putting that in the space. Yep. I, okay. Here, I'm going to see if I can copy that. Well, um, she's already, it's already in the comments there. So the AKC also has a legislative alert. Amen, Patrick. Fur equals money now. Only reason why I care to be done because the dog industry has profit now. Right. It's starting to grow. People are starting yeah. to realize that there's a lot of money here. Uh, Teresa only set in stone. Uh, until someone wants to challenge it by filing a lawsuit. Yes, a much harder route. We need to get ahead of the game. And uh, lobbying committees are into Tangent City, nothing related. I've reported for their work. Pork is 10 things. Um, one bit. <laughs> That's what we were talking about, stuffing this yeah. bill with pork. Yeah. Like a lot of stuff yeah. that we don't uh, shared this. Awesome. Everybody share Good this. Answers. Good. I'm going through. We got tons of comments. I'm kind yeah, of let's do it, man. Let's there. do it. When, when we were training hunting retrievers in competition, the attitude was you leave your leash and your ego yeah. at the line. And you can't. Yeah, I agree. And you can't train these dogs with a clicker at 200 yards, man. There's limitations with purely positive. Like, and that's the beautiful thing Sheila, about what she just said, man. That was an awesome comment. You can't train your dog with a clicker at 200 yards. Well, how do you reach out and touch them with no tools? Yeah. You can't. Well, and not only that, but the timetable. If we were to choose yeah. only to use positive reinforcement, we look at, at how long that would take to just, yeah. and, and it's unobtainable, especially yeah. when I got somebody with a problem that wants to be fixed right now, yeah. and they're paying me good money to provide them results and to fix or to help their life, their quality of life, yeah. right? Puppy breath from when I was sniffed, or when the puppy had the puppy here. Hey, look who's here, Larry. Larry, Nothing, what's up, man? Love you, dude. Yeah, Larry's Larry's awesome. good he, guys, he, and you know what? I, I remember Larry um, did a video with a gentleman, and I talked to him. I can't remember his name over in Ireland when they put that bet. I think it was up to like 10, 15K to a positive trainer that could train a dog to stop attacking the sheep with positive methods only. That bet was never cashed in. 
You remember that belt? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That that well, bet was that nobody took their bet. Yeah, because it's, Crazy, there, huh? there's something that to be said with that, and not only yeah. that, but I know that they only use positive reinforcement methodologies with service dogs, and now the service dog weight is exponentially growing to years and years and years, and so not only are we not achieving the training results, but we're also doing a disservice to people that could truly use these dogs to enhance their lives. Yeah. Mom and puppy are playing back here. Um, nature knows best when we were yep, talking about Emily, the puppies. Yeah. Hey, Emily from Holland. Emily, who gets yeah. uh, Emily? She, hey, if anybody's looking for really good dogs, Emily and her husband, they bring some really good dogs over in Holland. Fantastic. That's the biggest thing. Happy dogs. That's right. And yeah. people love, love to see a happy dog, man. Like when they, a lot of times they don't know what they're seeing, but they're seeing a dog that's happy and that's fulfilled. And right. Uh, me too. Heart and soul. And I'm just clicking. I hope I don't get a troll in here that yeah. <laughs> if I do, then as long as uh, we're green, we'll grow. We, we get ripe. We rot. Right. That's another aspect of it. And, and that's the, basically leaving your mindset open, Sheila. I think you're kind of saying as long as we can keep retaining and gaining information, we'll grow. Once that stops, we're going to rot. We're going to rot. We're dead in the water, man, waiting for a dog that's going to show us all the holes in our and in, in what we don't yeah. know. And, 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 and like I said earlier. Yeah. And I can promise you guys, the IACP board of directors with the president, um, Tracy and the executive director, executive director Andrew, and all the board, we are working extremely hard not to let any of this happen. But at the end of the day, we're only nine folks on the board. We need every member. We need people who aren't members. We need your help. Right now is the most critical time that the organization has ever been at. We need you. I don't mean it, mean it sound like an army recruiting poster where Uncle Sam post, points at you and say, you know, we want you, but we want you. We need you. Yes, 100%. Romel, this guy and his dad also, they went to my silver school together. Romel and I were uh, classmates. Um, his dad was before me. Um, fantastic dog trainer, some of the best I know. But you don't hear nothing about him, right? Because they don't post nothing on Facebook. They're too busy training. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Jesse, another student of ours, Tony and Jesse, been students of ours for the past almost nine years. Have fun at Silver. Anybody that's going to Silver School, like uh, Gail Lucy told me the best advice. Yeah, she's that a classmate I, of mine too. Yeah, she's amazing. Yeah. And she said, I said, what advice do you have for somebody that's going to Silver School? And this is the advice that I give everybody that is going to Silver School. Pretend like you never worked with a dog in your life. Pretend yeah. like you are like an, like an open slate. Just get ready to yeah. learn and get ready to get ready to, to uh, experience some some stress. I mean, it's, yeah. it's hard, man. It's not easy. And, and you're going to understand this stuff, but it's also, it's, it's something that, that you really have to, it's a thorough type of presentation and the type of learning that you do, you're going to experience Napopo as well. Yeah. Just be quiet class. and listen, be quiet. Listen. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Take it all in because if you talk too much, ask me how I know. People will get mad at you. <laughs> like, I heard about that, Bill. I heard about that. <laughs> Michael's like, "Hey, dude, uh, you know, some people are are not understanding because you're talking a little too much." And I'm like, "Me? No, yeah. I, I'm assertive. Uh, like I, I express myself, and I know that, and that's that's important to know things about yourself that you can kind of work. But on you as mean well. well. You mean well. And I Bill, truly want to yeah. understand this stuff, man. Like, I gotta, I gotta uh, know, so and and. So okay. Toon, he's a dog psychologist in Holland. He's on our committee in the European committee. He's awesome. on our committee now. I uh, just went to the oversight. So you never know. He may be the next chair because we're voting for chairs next next week. Let me see. Yep. Agreed. All fire. Hey, hey, here's a question, Bill. Not to put okay. you on the spot. Not at all. You're in the ISCP, right? Okay. All right. You see what I'm saying? I need you, brother. Never, I need you. I know, I know. I've never been a member, and I'm not. A, I, but I do support it in different ways. Yeah. So I do. Yeah. I don't. Uh, uh, and the only thing that that I the only reason why is because of this, like organizations that have become too political, and I'm I'm kind of a lone wolf. I understand. I, I understand. But I also. But I will support it, and I'm. Uh, you got my support. I go to the conferences. Yeah. I pay extra, yep. and I yeah, can actually yeah. pay for my membership with the extra yeah. amount that I pay. But it's just something. 
You know, you did put me on the spot, but I, like yeah, a lot I'm of people sorry, don't realize that. No, it's all good. It's all good. But yeah. it's the truth. Like this is just yeah. like some people aren't joiners. Like I'm just uh, like and, and nothing, nothing against it. But it's like people are surprised to realize that I've never been a member, um, but I am a full supporter. And and who knows? I mean, we don't we know. We can what the use your holds. work ethic. And I can tell you this, Bill, if you join. I can vouch for you. You can use my recommendation and I guarantee you. So one of these chairmen or oversights would snag you up immediately, put you on a committee due to your worth edit. We need cool. people like you, man. Well, Todd McVicker is the first one way back in 2010. I think that yeah. uh, like when I first, one of my first uh, conferences that I went to and I've actually had booths at the conferences and stuff where, yeah. where I, so I've supported, I've been a long supporter and I talk about ICP on a lot of these um, live streams that I do, but yeah, you're, you're, that's hilarious. Bill is amazing. He is, he is. As I burp, <laughs> right when I say that. <laughs> Bill is amazing. Let me say that again without the burp. Thank you, Sheila um patrick and alicia ah, fantastic there Ta we go tanya is a lifelong friend she's like a mother to our team she works with us in many roles she is a breed warden she has some of the highest certifications of breeding in germany that you can ever reach she has yeah. forgot more about dog breeding than 99.9 percent .9 people ever learn she's got a beautiful dog in her profile picture too those are bloodlines yeah Look at this lady. Who's this gal right here? That's Alicia. <laughs> she got it's a ghost. There she goes. <laughs> Alicia, you're invited to do one of these live streams with uh oh. Well, you gotta right stay on her time. though, man. Bill, you gotta stay on her. She is such an in the shadows person, man. You gotta stay on her. She'll do it, but you gotta stay on her. You heard that. You, uh, your husband just uh committed you. <laughs> so you're gonna yeah, do is, it. Is today Yuri's birthday too? Is it yeah, is it your birthday, Yuris? Michael and Yuri share share a birthday. Happy birthday to both of you. Happy birthday to happy Michael. Birthday. Happy birthday to Yoris. Uh, okay, bite work rounds got to go. Okay, great. Fantastic. Patience is key. I'm going to fly through some of these. Yeah. Uh, you are right. So true um, about lobbyists getting on the committee. Amen. How do I sign up? ICP needs structure like a regular trade association. It's the only way to okay. cover our industry. All right. So let me let me hit on that. We do have structure and and we are re we are consolidating and reorganizing. All right. And we hear what the members are saying, and I can assure you that the board is working on it. We are working on it. I promise you. There's so much going on right now at the board level to restructure a lot of things. Just give us time and you will see results. You have my word. And we're almost to the bottom of the comments here, you guys. So bear yep. with us for just a second. Um, yep. Sheila says, hold on. I dropped my pen. Now, this is it, man. This is what it boils down to. Animal yeah. welfare, you guys. We train blood trailing dogs to recover wounded game. Uh, there's no way to keep our dogs safe without a remote collar and GPS. So it's animal welfare. That's what people, yeah. it's not just a hammer, you know. Uh, when I was sick, I let my membership last. So she's going to join on Monday. So there we go. If you guys join Thank or if, you. You, if you're inspired to join based on our conversation, please let us know. Let, uh, I'll let Patrick know. It's, uh, make Tell anybody. Show. Jerome, what's up, what's man? What's here, man? What's here? Oh, Jerome. That's my boy, man. I ain't talked to him in a while, though. We were just talking about how with the French senator to make an answer to the deputy who wants to ban the tools. Jerome, good to see you here, brother. I'll, I haven't talked yes. to him in a, in a while. I, I wanted... Uh, I wanted to do uh, bed bed bugs, like scenting dogs, and I was going to have him ship over some beagles. I'm still, yes, uh, but my wife got sick, and so I had to take a year and a half off to care for her. But I'm still very interested in yep. uh, scent scent uh, uh, training with those dogs. I want to let every trainer that I believe that the future will be different. We defend the same target: licensed training technology. Yep. Okay. Me as a, a German, uh, the only thing I can say is support brother. the IACP and that's fight back. That's my brother right control. there. Yeah, that's thank my brother you, right there, Dominic. Dominic, thank, thank you. you for all you do. Dominic is Dominic showed up to my door five years ago, green, with that dog in the picture that people wanted to put to sleep because he was aggressive. Now that dog has IGP at the highest, uh, IGP one, done, very social. In Europe, it's already, it's nearly too late, yep. 
Has anyone contacted the NRA for support? That's a good idea, Jackie. I mean, I, would, Jackie, dog, I owe you right? an answer. I, Jackie, I owe you an answer. And I promise you, I'm writing your name down right now. Please send me a friend request, Jackie. Um, I owe you an answer. You will have that answer by Monday. Okay. And then we have Kashi pretending would be hard. Keeping in mind would be a better option. Agreed, Kashi. Uh, the dogs need consequence for doing a consequence for not doing. Yeah. And right. and Romel and in Holland, the ban, and I could be wrong, but the ban is in place and it will, the ban is approved and will, it's already in place. The tool ban is already in place at the beginning of this year. So they're struggling over there too in Holland. Belgium, I think is 2025. Get on it. And, and we call this the must key where the dog must do. And we're installing that must key and the consequence for doing and a consequence for not doing. But the dog, yeah. if, I mean, we say this with a caveat, the dog needs to know the right answer first. The dog needs to know what they're being corrected for. And we need to set up that dog uh, where the correction is the consequence. And when we look at the word con sequence, right, it's a sequence of events and the, co the con is the coming together. So the consequence yeah. can be good. The consequence can be not so Correct. Good. A consequence isn't always bad. That's it's right. It's an action. Yeah, yeah. So last comment here uh, for now. I think we need a balanced lobby, offensive and cooperative with politician tool ban as a reaction on years of aversive training, yanking cranks by a lot of so-called dog trainers. If we keep talking and explaining, showing what balanced training is about maybe there will be a reaction on bans in the community due to uncontrolled positive only trainers or trained dogs. Dude, I've seen dogs that are psychotic that have only been trained with treats. They've never been told or never been shown the boundaries, right? And, and a lot of times I'll take that dog, I'll show him a boundary really quick. And it's like, it, it, and the dog's like, oh my gosh, I never knew. And the dog loves me for it too. And, and a lot of this behavior I tell people needs to be met head on, man, right? And I've had dogs that are, I've come into a pet dog house, that dog's coming to bite me right now. Yeah. Right. And I'm going to show the dog that that is not a good idea at all. What to do in, a, in an effective way that that communicates that dog efficiently. And not only that, what I see is that dog going like, whoa, I never knew. I love you. <laughs> like they 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 it endears themselves a lot of times to me because I not only can correct them, but I can also keep them safe from any threat that they perceive in the world. And they want to, they want to align themselves with a strong, a strong, calm, confident energy. And that's, that's yeah. kind of what, what I show them is that this exists in human world as well. Like you haven't been shown this. And unfortunately, I'm sorry about that, but um, you've, you've become kind of this, explosive monster and i have to show yeah. you that that's not a good idea to do with every yeah. human being then it's better me and that's what i tell people i'm the guy that you want your dog biting because i will show them that that's not a good idea you don't want your dog <laughs> biting somebody out yeah. in, the, in the world that's going to sue your ass and i've had people sued for six hundred thousand dollars i've had people win judgments for in the six figures for uh, somebody coming up to their door knocking on the door and the dog biting them on the ankle like, and it's, it's, I mean, there's dog bite lawyers that will. I'll take a bite. I'll take a bite for six figures. You will? Okay. No, I, yeah, I totally will. 100%. <laughs> I'm, thinking, I'm thinking one for a lot less. I tell you that. I mean, yeah, I got them all over me, man. I take bites all the time, man. I'll take one. It'll be all right. Yeah. And it's, it's like, um, that's it is like, we have to show them like you have a liability here man this this house this is you live in a nice place and th this becomes like something that is a target for people and in fact listen to this man there's people that will walk up on dog like beware of dog signs as an indicator to be able to sue somebody if they're they walk on the property and the dog nails them then they sue them right and so that some of these people there's there's some there's some evil shits in the world that that are, yeah. are that, that like to take advantage and and see opportunities that we might not see because th their mind is not in the right place. They're they're um they're they're just not not motivated to do good. They're motivated as takers and 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 we have psychopaths in this world and we have people that if we don't acknowledge these people and there's a there's a show out there called I am Fishhead. And it talks about like the fish often rots from the head down. And it's an allegory for 
uh, a lot of businesses or even politicians that that the head of it is is the influence that um, that will rot the whole thing. And we have to realize that these people that are are psychopaths or they don't really care uh, that these positions of power are magnets for for people like that. And one thing that they don't want is to be found out. So I Am Fishhead is is an amazing uh, documentary. And what we find out is that in the general public, it's about 10% of the people that are full on like psych, psych, psychotic and, and when we, or psychopaths. And then there's also different derivations of that. And a dog is a, is a good tool for supply for these people to get them some of the egoic supply that they need because they have control over this dog. The dog can't tell other people what's going on. I mean, like, like we do with our, our mouth and using the English language, they can tell me what's going on because it's obvious that that dog has been abused. Um, and, and so we need to, to know that one, that people like this exist that too, how to, how to find them and, and also how to call it out when you see it. Right. And a lot of times because we're, we're mostly good people. And because if you're a good people, you don't consider other people that might be not so good. And so, because it doesn't come into your consideration because you would never do that to a dog. It doesn't mean that somebody else wouldn't do this to a dog. And so yeah. that's, that's not the, it's not the tool. It's the fool. That's what I tell people. It's like, yeah. it's, and a lot of times they put that on the tool and we see that also with um, even with gun culture and stuff in America as well, that, that they want to ban the gun instead of looking at the, the fool that used this gun inappropriate. It's the same in dog training. There's, you can hurt, you can abuse a dog with a harness. You can abuse a dog with a flat collar. You can abuse a dog with a knee collar. You can, but um, at the end of the day, it's not the tool that's doing it. It's the <laughs> hand the fool that that actually agree. once successful Almost. lead to another yeah 100 so that's the last comment man and we're going to stay, stay uh, away from comments now and anything that you want to um oh touch on this man, one, man. I, bill this is fun you know i didn't i haven't done live streams in a while i was taking a break um alicia and i had a very busy year business-wise and moving and everything so you're the first one i've done in about a year um, thank you. It was fantastic. I love your show. I love what you do. I love what you thank stand you for. Continue to do it no matter what people say, because people like you are getting our work voices heard. So well, and you, you guys, you do. of course, and you guys can help me if you, if you join my Patreon, because this is what okay. I want to do full we'll time. Do I want to do, we'll do, I mean, not just you, Patrick, but I'm talking about for the audience here and everybody else, like this is what I want to do full time. And I'm starting to already buy equipment that I can take this show on the road. I would love to come to Europe. I would love to go around the world and show people not just where we talk one-on-one -on -one like this, but actually show the heart and soul dogs, show the difference between dogs that are trained with, um, you know, Napopo versus other methodologies. And, and maybe we might find pearls of wisdom and other methodologies that we can adopt and start to apply yeah. to our philosophy as well. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I am a teacher and I am a humanitarian and, um, and I love these damn dogs, man. Like that, like, and I think that it's my calling. That's why I've traded my life to work with them but I think that I can reach more people and have more influence by doing stuff like this. And I have hundreds I of these agree. videos, you guys on YouTube. And, um, you know, I just invite you to join my Patreon page, help me uh, reach more people, help me expand my operations and buy some more equipment, hire maybe a videographer um, and the people that are already joined, dude, I'm so every time I see somebody join, man, my heart just explodes. It's something that is, is, it's like, dude, this is, this is awesome. And I think that we can do this together. And um, yeah, man, I think that also I might tap you, uh, Patrick, to do something uh, exclusive for my Patreon people where we can talk, get anything into more you need, man. You got it. And anything you, it. you need, you have my team in Germany's full support, Alicia's full support, anybody you need to get in contact with. I know mostly everybody just let me know. How do people get in contact with you? They can either go on Facebook, um, Patrick Lockett or Alicia Lockett. They can. That's the best way. Facebook is the best way. Okay. You guys check them out yep. on Facebook. Here, let me actually put, uh, I'm going to put your, um, yep. your profile here up in the mm -hmm. comment section here, a little bit of a landing page. So if you guys reach out to Patrick and, um, 
if you want to and and let's get unified you guys let's let's yeah. let's let's cooperate there we go if anybody's in florida i'm i'm in i'm in trenton in the gainesville area let me know come by drink a beer shoot the shit cool i want to come down to florida i love florida you come dude, on you're, you're always welcome you know about florida man do you know about florida man the video, yeah, the series, yeah, we watching it. Well, well, no, there's that's just the saying about Florida oh. man. Like, go Google Florida man because there's a bunch oh. of crazy people in Florida. There's a series <laughs> called Florida Man on Netflix. We're watching right now. Actually, I, I want to watch it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, you so, guys. Jackie's one of my supporters. Uh, one thanks, of my dear Jackie. friends. Thank and, you, um, Bill. Very good. Teresa. All right, I'll go through these and then oh, let's man. say goodbye to everybody. You, man. I love you back. I love you. Bye, all back. everybody. Thank you guys so much, man. I appreciate it. It was a blast. Thank you. You bet. And Thank Patrick, st stay there. I'm going to say goodbye to you in the studio, but we're going to end all the right. broadcast now. Everybody share this. Go to my YouTube page, uh, subscribe, and um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And go, go pet your dog for me, too, please. Yeah, all right. <laughs>